We begin in the Middle East, where pressure is growing on Israel to let more aid into Gaza. Washington is urging Israel to do more to provide sustained humanitarian access. Officials say they're deeply concerned about reports of imminent famine. They've called for the Rafa crossing to be reopened as soon as possible. Egypt stopped allowing in supplies after Israel seized control of the Gaza side. The two countries have blamed each other for its continued closure. Speaking at a news conference, the White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said more needed to be done. So this level of aid remains insufficient and we want to continue to press uh, Israel to increase the level of assistance moving into Gaza. We understand what I just laid out is not sufficient. We want to get more in. We are continuing to have those conversations with Israel. And we have seen some progress. We need to get more in. The U.S. concern over the amount of aid getting into the enclave has been echoed by the U.N. Their aid chief warned that famine is now an immediate threat and that U.N. staff were struggling to help people displaced by the Israeli offensive in Rafa. The facts on the ground tell us we don't need to be scientists to see the, the, the consequence of, of the removal of food and, and you know, also for famine, particularly the removal of medical care and nutritional care, which is the, the precursor to you know, famine killed through disease um, as well as hunger. The Israeli Prime Minister has doubled down on the importance of a military campaign in Rafah. Benjamin Netanyahu was shown flying over the Gaza Strip with military officers. His comments come after a very public spat with his defence minister, Yoav Gallant, over the future of Gaza. He was speaking during a visit to soldiers at a military base. The battle for Rafah is critical. It's not just the rest of their battalions. It's also their oxygen pipes for escape and resupply. This battle, of which you are an integral part, is a battle that decides many things in this campaign. I repeat, we are in a critical battle now. Your action helps to end it. Well, we can speak now to our correspondent, Dan Johnson, who's in Jerusalem. We say the pressure is mounting, John. Uh, Dan, just tell us what um, the U.S. has been saying. Yeah, the U.S. is calling for the land borders into Gaza to be reopened to ease access for aid, particularly for food and for fuel. There is some positive news in that the uh, emergency temporary floating dock that has been constructed by the U.S. military uh, will soon be ready to accept aid via the sea, and there are already deliveries sailing from Cyprus towards Gaza. But the message is that that shouldn't be relied upon solely to deliver aid to Gaza now that the most important and effective routes are the land crossings to allow trucks through to deliver food and to bring fuel so that that food can be effectively appropriately distributed throughout Gaza to the Palestinian refugees who need it and the warning from the UN is that 2.4 million refugees are now on the brink of impending famine if more food doesn't get through and can't be distributed uh, effectively so that is the call for Israel to reopen and particularly the Rafah crossing, but that of course has been difficult because of the intensification of Israeli military operations in that area over the last week or more now. And what about today then? Uh, we've got Israel making its case at the ICJ, responding to these accusations from South Africa. What can we expect today? Yes, this is a further stage in South Africa's submissions to the International Court of Justice, uh, calling effectively for a halt to the Israeli military operations uh, in Rafa. The earlier case that started at the beginning of the year accused Israel of genocide, and that wider case is still going on. But South Africa has been able to bring an emergency motion uh, calling for the, uh, the operation, the military conduct around Rafa to be suspended because of the impact that that is having on Palestinian refugees. Hundreds of thousands who've been uprooted in the last week or 10 days by the military operation there. And these were people in the main who had already been forced from their homes earlier in this conflict. People who'd moved to Rafa in, in seek of shelter and safety. And they are people who are now on the move again and are wondering where is safe, where they will be able to find shelter and food because of the desperate situation and the lack of safe options. Israel will make its submissions in defense uh, of its case to the ICJ later this morning.
Okay, well, thanks very much for now. That's uh, Dan Johnson reporting to us uh, live from Jerusalem. And we will, of course, uh, keep right across what's going on at the ICJ uh, later today and bring it to you here on BBC News.